Okay, so let's get started. So the topic of today's webinar is Java IO Stream or Stream in short. So this is the list of topics that we are going to cover. So let's talk about what is a stream first. You can think of a stream as a sequence of data. A stream is associated with a source or destination and the source and destination could be disk files, devices, and other programs or network socket or memory arrays. So any location, any source that can provide some data could be a source and any place that you can uh, send data could be destination of the stream. Now, as I said before, stream is a sequence of data and the types of data could be simple byte, it could be localized characters, it could be data type, or it could be objects. Now, there are different kinds of streams. Some streams simply pass on data, so this is something that we are going to call uh, node stream, and others manipulate and transform the data in useful ways and these are what is called uh, filter stream and we are going to learn these two in detail in the rest of the presentation. Now programming model of stream is very simple and consistent. Uh, regardless of what streams you are going to use and we'll see those examples moving forward. So this is how things work uh, in terms of input stream. So your program will use an input stream to read data from a source, data source, one item at a time. So you can think of this is a stream. So this thing is represented as a stream in this case is input stream. On the other hand, output stream is the other direction. So from your programs, you are sending data to the destination and this stream is considered as, as output stream. Relatively straightforward. Okay, so let's move on to the types of streams. So you can categorize the streams into three different categories. Uh, so first categorization is based on whether the data is character data or byte data uh, in, in character form or byte form. So it could be character stream or byte stream. Now depending on the direction, of course, it could be input stream or output stream. That is kind of obvious. Now this is important. Whether the data on a stream is manipulated or not, uh, it could be either node stream or filter stream. So the filter stream is the one that actually manipulate or transform the data. Okay, so we'll see these examples in the following slide. So just to recap the difference between character and by stream. So by stream is typically is used for reading binary data, for, for example, like image. Uh, and uh, the root class of by stream is input stream class and output stream class, depending on the direction. And both of these are abstract classes. The character streams are used for reading Unicode characters, and uh, those streams are rooted from reader class or writer class. Again, these two are abstract classes. Okay, so input and output streams, input or output streams, so input stream or source stream, uh, either term is okay, is basically is used to read data from the source. And again, this input stream class is for reading byte data, and this reader class is used for reading character 
data. So this is a bit different categorization based on the direction of the stream. Uh, output or sync stream is for writing to those streams. Again, output stream class for byte data and writer class for character data. Okay, so as I said before, this difference is the important node and filter streams. So node stream sometimes called the data sync stream. It contains the functionality for reading or writing from a specific data source. And it doesn't perform any manipulation or transformation. Again, the node streams include a file stream or a memory stream and pipe stream and things like that. Now, filter stream is for manipulation or transformation of the data. Now, the source of the data has to be node stream. So it is what is called a layered onto node stream. Sometimes uh, the terminolo terminology that we use is wrapped up the node stream. And this wrapping or layering on node streams is called stream chaining, uh, stream chaining or chaining of streams. So we'll take a look at that in the following slide. So stream class hierarchy, there, have, there are in fact a lot of uh, the, the uh, stream classes. Okay? So I don't expect you to read each of this. Basically, I want you to see there are two different tree structure. One is for byte and the other one is for character. And this is input stream and output stream. And this is for, uh, re this is reader and writer uh, classes. Now there is one important stream called the inf uh, filter input stream or filter output stream. So that is something uh, that we are going to talk about in the following slides. So the filter input stream has a few subclasses and same thing for filter output stream, few subclasses. Okay, so stream chaining. And we're going to take a look at the filter stream one more time in a few minutes. So let's talk about the concept of stream chaining. So this is the way that you are going to work with streams. So stream chaining is here we are using file reader no stream class to read a file. So now we create a stream that is reading data from this particular file. Now what we do at that at this point is chaining this buffered reader. So this is buffered reader is filter stream and is taking the file reader note stream object. So now you have buffered reader object. So we are reading data from the file reader and that is fed into buffered reader. So what you are going to deal with is buffered reader object. Now you typically see this line of code. Okay? So rather than having these two lines, you are going to combine these two into a single line. In this case, I am creating file reader stream object and then that is fed into buffer reader uh, stream object. So in this case, buffer, we are going to talk about buffer reader. So buffer reader is example of uh, filter stream because it's manipulating the data. It's actually combining, aggregating the data to into a buffer. So that is considered as a manipulation. So that is considered as a filter stream. In fact, that is a subclass of a filter stream class, as we'll see in a few minutes. Same thing for output operation. So in this case, our final destination is this file, which is captured as output stream called the file reader. I'm sorry, file writer stream object. Again, this is a node stream type. And here we are layering or wrapping this file writer object with buffered writer uh, stream object. Again, this is filtered stream type. So what you are dealing with is writer object. Whenever you are writing something into buffered writer, it's going to feed into buffered writer stream, which is in turn feeding into this file writer uh, stream. Eventually, it's going to create, uh, the, it's adding contents to this file. Again, again, you combine these two lines of code into a single line, like this. So this is what you're going to see quite a lot. In fact, you can have 
another chaining. So here we have an example of chaining two stream object, right? Uh, you can have a multiple uh, stream chaining, of course. So this is the filter stream classes I, I mentioned a few minutes ago. So you know we have uh, filtered input stream is subclass of input stream. Now these are the subclasses of filter input stream. So again, these four subclasses are designed to manipulate data in some fashion. So we are going to talk about data input stream and buffered input stream in a few minutes, looking at the code. Uh, here, line number input stream is, it is input stream that understands the line number. Pushback input stream is, uh, it is input stream that can, that you can actually use to push things back. Okay, so let's just take a look at the um, Java documentation of pushback input stream. So here you have these onread methods and this is basically pushing back data to the stream okay so it's manipulating the data okay uh, mostly you are going to use data input stream and buffered input stream uh, same thing with upper stream so we have a data upper stream which is opposite of data input stream uh, buffered upper stream which is opposite of uh, buffered input stream and print, print stream is a stream, uh, is a filter stream, uh, which, uh, which is actually a parent class of standard uh, out and standard error. And uh, let's talk about that later on when we talk about standard uh, input and output and error uh, streams. Okay. Moving forward, we are going to look into each of these stream type in a bit more detail, starting with the by stream. So by stream is dealing with data in the form of 8-bit bytes. Okay. And of course, all stream by stream classes are descended from input stream and output stream. And the file input stream and file output stream, those are examples of byte uh, stream classes. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in previous slide, uh, it just occurred to me that uh, in this filter stream, you can actually create your own custom filter stream if you want to. If you want to manipulate data in some fashion, you can certainly create uh, your custom stream class, which extends filter input stream, and then you can overwrite, read, and write methods, and uh, in that case, you can do anything you want. Okay. All right, something it just occurred to me that I need to mention. Okay, so this is an example of how to use file input stream and file output stream class object. So here we are reading uh, this file, and uh, in a form of bytes, this reading it will actually read uh, each byte of this file, and uh, then it's actually reading it as an int. Okay and uh, then it's going to write things out. So here we have a file input stream object and file output stream object and we are reading one byte at a time and then we are writing it out. Okay. And then you close uh, those stream objects. So simple by stream uh, input and output operation like this. Suppose you have data which is in the form of this byte. You know, suppose each of these represent the byte. When you read, it's actually reading it an int. Okay, and then when you write, it will just take a byte and write out to the stream. Let's move on to character stream. So the difference between character stream and byte stream is that byte stream deals with data in 8-bit byte. Character stream deal with 16-bit Unicode. And as we have seen before, the character streams are subclasses of uh, reader and writer abstract classes. So Reader and writer classes are uh, essentially the same except with the input stream and output stream classes except again uh, reader and writer deals with character stream while 
uh, the the by streams are dealing with only bytes. So character stream deals with characters, character arrays, or strings. So if you take a look at this code, this looks pretty much the same as uh, the uh, file input stream class as we have seen previously. So here we read uh, this file as a file reader and uh, and the file writer. So if this file is just ASCII file, you know the result is pretty much the same. But if this file contains some, let's say, localized characters like the Korean characters and Japanese characters then you got to use this file reader and file writer uh, objects in order, to re in order to read them as a localized characters. Uh, if you read them as a byte array, byte stream, then it will not recognize those, them, uh, those characters as uh, the localized characters. So, in fact, character streams are often wrappers of byte stream. Internally, it's actually using byte stream to read the data, and then it will perform all the translation into characters. Okay. So, file reader actually uses file input stream, and file writer uses file output stream, and then performs the uh, the uh, translation into localized characters. Now, you want to use character streams most of the time except if you are not except when you're dealing with let's say binary data such as images you know images are not containing any localized characters right so in that case you want to use a byte stream however when you're dealing with characters uh, you want to use character stream so these are the reasons so primary advantage of character stream is that they make it easy to write programs that are not dependent upon specific character encoding and therefore is easy to internationalize. Okay. Uh, also they are more efficient than by streams because character streams typically deal with buffer at a time read and write operation while byte stream is dealing with reading byte at a time. Okay. So rule of thumb is use character stream whenever possible. Okay, so buffer stream is an example of filter stream. So the usage of buffer stream is the reason that we want to use buffer stream is obvious. We want to have higher performance, uh, meaning we want to read uh, into a buffer so that your applications can read data from a memory space rather than performing this guy operation whenever you need data. So that is really obvious. So this is something obvious, so I'm going to move on. So again, this is the code that we have seen, right? So you create typically a node stream object such as file reader object here, and then you are going to chain it with buffered reader. So uh, whenever you are using this buffered reader object for reading data, it's actually reading from a buffer that is maintained by this buffered reader object. Same thing for the output. Okay, so whenever you're writing, you are going to write into a buffer and then it will be flushed to the disk at appropriate time. Okay, so buffered input stream and buffered output stream create buffered by streams and reader and writer create buffered character streams. Yeah, that's kind of obvious. So how do you flush buffer stream? So it often makes sense to write out a buffer of critical points without waiting to it without waiting for it to fill. This is known as flushing the buffer. So without actually filling it, you know, sometimes you want to write to the disk. Some buffered output classes support auto flush, uh, depending on the flag that you specify in option in constructor. So when this auto flush auto flush is enabled, certain key events cause the buffer to be flushed. For example, uh, you can specify this auto flush auto flush flag with the print writer, and uh, every time println uh, or format method is invoked, uh, it will be flushed. You can certainly call flush method uh, at whatever uh, at whatever time that you think is actually necessary to flush uh, the data to the upper stream. Okay, so moving forward, 
uh, line oriented IO. So one of the method that is included in buffered stream is uh, read line. Okay. So you are going to be able to read. So here we chained uh, file reader object into buffered reader and then we can call read line method of this buffered reader object. Okay. So if you are, so this file reader uh, object does not support read line. Right. So in order to in order to read data uh, 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 per line basis, then you have to create buffered reader object from the file reader object. So this is again example of chaining that we have seen before. Okay, moving forward, data stream is another type of filter stream, meaning it manipulates the data. So data stream support binary I/O of primitive data type values such as boolean character uh, char byte short and things like that and also it handles string values uh, these data streams implement either data input or data output interface so let's see example of this so this is a case that we chain three different stream object right so here we have uh, file output stream object passing the name of the file then we chain it with buffered upper stream and then we chain it with data upper stream now once you got data upper stream object here it is out variable then you can write primitive type like this write double write int and write utf so this is uni unicode uh, the, uh, the uh, data Uh, same thing for data input stream. So we chained uh, these three stream object, and then you can read uh, different um, primitive type: read double, read int, or read utf. Okay, and uh, you can have EOF exception for uh, the end of file detection. Okay, moving forward object streams so as I said before the type of data could be primitive type character type or it could be object type right so object streams are designed to handle objects as streams so object streams support input and output of object and those objects need to be serializable type and the object stream classes, the examples of them are object input stream and object output stream. And uh, they are implementations of object input and object output interfaces, and which are themselves sub interfaces of data input and data output interfaces. So if an object contains a very simple primitive type such as a calendar, you know calendar typ calendar class contains uh, various properties and each of those properties are pretty simple uh, types. Uh, it doesn't actually have any uh, you know reference to another object. However, however typical uh, custom uh, class, a custom object of a custom class typically will have a reference meaning it has a field that refers to another class right so in that case uh, the object serialization should be able to handle all those uh, the uh, referred object instances as well so read object is to reconstitute an object from a stream it has to be able to reconstitute reconstitute all of the objects of the original uh, refer original object refers to um, so these additional objects might have their own references as, uh, and so on. So you know basically what this slide is saying is that typical object will have fields uh, in which a reference to another object is uh, the uh, saved. So when you serialize it, so let's actually see uh, some example in a few minutes. Same thing with the right object. So when you write object, uh, that object uh, that gets created uh, should be should contain complete information that could be used to recreate the object. So that's the idea. Okay. 
So let's say we have an object A uh, that has a reference to B uh, object and B has a reference to D and E and also A has a reference to C. Okay? Uh, when we serialize this object A it should actually provide all the information about all these referred objects. So the stream should contain enough information about all this. So when we recreate it, we should be able to recreate exactly the same object instance. Okay, so that's what the object stream class is provided for you. Okay, so again, invoking right object A, so we are talking about A here. Uh, you know, when we call this right object A, uh, all the objects referred within A should be also serialized. Okay, so when it is read back, when it is read back by read object method, all the other objects should be able to be constructed. Okay, so that's basically what I just said in the previous slide. Okay. So standard streams, uh, so you have seen stream in and stream out and stream error. So this is, for example, is, um, uh, let's actually see stream out. So if I see Java documentation, you can see uh, I'm going to, yeah, so these are, in fact, dealing with uh, print stream, input stream, and print stream here. So if I want to actually go to print stream, so you can see print stream is a type of filtered output stream. Okay. So the manipulation the print stream does is basically, you know, it will be able to buffering a little bit and uh, things like that. And uh, so the the um, this is what what print stream does okay, can be created so as to the flush automatically. So this means that flush method is automatically invoked after byte array is written. One of the printed length method is invoked and the new line character or byte is written. Okay, so this is the manipulation that this print stream does as a filtered stream object. Okay, moving forward. Closing stream, so closing a stream when it is no longer needed is very important so that you are not leaking a memory, memory space. Kind of obvious. Uh, file class, uh, I'm sure you have seen file class. So file class is provided for manipulation of file object. And uh, let's see the code. So you can create a file object and you can get the name of that file uh, by calling get name method. You can see whether that file exists or not. Uh, you can make a directory and you can delete the file or directory. So directory is a kind of file object, right? All right, so those are rather straightforward. Okay, so let's move on to the hands-on app. So hands-on lab covers actually more than what we discussed in the presentation. So presentation didn't cover, for example, pipe stream or scanner or formatter. Uh, so this is uh, a bit more comprehensive than the presentation. So by stream is relatively straightforward concept as we have seen. This is exactly the same thing that we have seen in the presentation. So we have file input stream object and then we are going to read it and then we are going to write into write out to file output stream. Again, this is reading byte for each time. So when you call read method for file input stream is reading a byte. So we have actually ASCII file, you know, Virago.txt uh, file. So because it's ASCII file, it will just read them, uh, you know, one by one. Okay. The next exercise is character stream. In fact, we are using the same file, and the, since again we are dealing with uh, ASCII file, you know, the result is the same. Okay. So here we are reading it uh, for. Uh, the uh, each byte or oh, each each yeah in this case because it's ASCII it's actually reading uh, you know each byte is representing uh, a character 
right? But if you happen to have a file that contains, for example, Korean language or Japanese language or Chinese language that are multibytes, then when you read it, you're going to read it as, for example, Korean character or Japanese character or Chinese character or things like that. Okay, moving forward. Uh, exercise 3 is buffered reader and buffered writer. So again, this is the first example of filter stream. So here, this example is, you know, we are performing some encryption. Okay, so we are reading some data and uh, so uh, this example is reading words.txt file and then we are going to encrypt it and create and then uh, encrypted data will be written to words out the text and this is the size of the uh, the data that we are going to encrypt so this is a good example that we want to use a buffered uh, the stream classes because you know we want to encrypt per line basis so we create this simple encryption class which is our custom class uh, that we are going to see in a few minutes and then we are calling encrypt method passing source file destination file and uh, the size of the encryption and then we can actually call uh, view content method later on to see the contents so if you see a simple encryption class here uh, we are dealing with a buffer reader object uh, we chained uh, this file reader object with buffered reader. Now you, we can read data. So for each line, we want to perform uh, this encryption, simple encryption. Okay. So we are basically dealing with encryption per line basis. All right. So again, that's pretty straightforward. Data stream, as I said before, is for supporting binary I.O. or primitive data types such as char, byte, and short, and things like that. So here, again, we are creating, uh, we create the file upper stream object, and then we chain it with data upper stream. So now we can actually call these methods, write double, write character, write int, and things like that. Okay. Uh, so we write them out, these values, and then we are reading them as data input stream. So again, we can call methods such as read double, read character, and things like that. So you can see data, data, uh, the uh, data input stream and data output stream is for uh, reading data in the form of primitive types. Okay, so. This is used for dealing with primitive type. Sorry about that. Hopefully my wife did check the phone. Okay, good. All right, so now data input and data output. Uh, another example here. Yeah, so this is an example that you are creating your own custom uh, the uh, um, manipulation uh, stream type. So I have checked data input. This is my own custom filter stream. And so this is again chaining through uh, three different stream object and uh, the last one uh, the outermost wrapper uh, stream is my own uh, stream class okay so I have created checked data input and checked data output so basically what we want to do is you know, whenever you, we are reading data, we want to cre we want to create a checksum value. Okay, so that is the manipulation logic that I have added to this custom uh, filtered stream class. So let's take a look at the uh, this checked data input class. So basically, we are overriding uh, the uh, this uh, read byte read fully and read fully so basically you know we are overriding those things and uh, then we have the uh, checksum interface and then we have actual implementation of this that supports this update method implementation okay so an example of custom uh, filtered classes 
object stream is you know in a sense counterpart of data input stream and data output stream so as i said before data input stream and data output stream is for manipulation of uh, primitive type right object stream on the other on the other hand is for dealing with object okay so in this example we have a custom object instance called card 3 so we have our own our own class called the card 3 is basically representing some you know the uh, uh, poker face and so we got card 3 and then we are going to wrap file output stream with object output stream and then we are going to call write object method passing that object so now the, uh, this write object method does everything for you so inside this write object method the serialization of object and internal object that this card object is referring to they are all serialized for you later on and then we are writing into card.out file okay so you know you can save this card.out file somewhere in your file system you can send this file to somebody and then you know you can that somebody could actually read that card.out file and then should be able to recreate the card, card object that contains the exact the same state Okay. So in this case, it's going to call read object method of object in stream, and uh, then it's going to return object instance. So we have to cast it, and uh, then this card object should be exactly the same object as this guy, meaning they should contain exactly the same state. Okay. So this is example of you know custom class called the card three. So you can actually serialize any object. moving forward okay so pipe stream this is something that I probably have to explain in a bit more detail so pipe stream should be so this is actually something that I need to explain first a pipe input stream should be connected to pipe output pipe output stream so you know this is the same concept of piping in Unix environment okay so one process generates some data and uh, through the pipe out big, pipe output and then pipe in input will receive the data okay so that is what we are trying to simulate with the pipe uh, streams okay all right so let me actually uh, you know explain this code so we have uh, let's actually run this application and uh, pipe Here you go. When you run the code, it's basically displaying this uh, set of words. Okay. All right. So now let's see the code. So what it does is it does perform a reverse and then sorting it and then reverse again okay so we have some words that are contained in words.txt file so we read that text file and create file reader object and then we are passing that file reader object to reverse method okay and uh, then you know once this is performed we are basically uh, the uh, you know, write the new list to the standard output. So that's what we're actually seeing. So the words of this words words.txt file has been reversed, sorted, and reversed. So let's take a look at what this reverse words does. So that is this code. Okay. So what happens is is we created file uh, the piped writer object first. And then as I said before pipe reader object is always getting piped out object okay so we created pipe writer object first and then we create a pipe reader object passing pipe out object so what it does is that you know whatever that whatever value that is being piped out whatever value that is being written to this pipe out will be immediately available to the uh, pipe reader stream okay all right 
Now we are going to create uh, the uh, so the source object. Uh, so we are going to provide a data source. Okay. So this source object is uh, let's see. Oh, okay. So you know when we call this reverse words, this source object is this guy, this file reader object. Okay. So this is a file reader object that represents a stream of words from words.txt file. So that is providing data source. Again, that's a buffered reader object. That's a chaining, right? And uh, then we also created print writer object passing piped output stream, pipe writer object. So again, we actually uh, have a chained version of printer print writer. Okay. All right. Now we are creating a new thread called reverse thread, passing this data source and the printer writer as an out. So this is this out is this printer writer, and this in is buffer read object. Okay. All right. So okay. So this is reader case. So now let's take a look at this reverse thread method. Okay, so this is receiving this buffer read object that representing that input source, the, the words in the text file, and this is the output file that we are writing things out. So this code is actually relatively simple. So this is a thread and it has a run. So when this thread is being invoked, so you know when we actually call start method of this thread object, that means run method of that thread is going to get executed. Uh, we haven't learned the threads yet, but that's the way things work in threading. You create the uh, thread object, and then you call th start method of the thread object, and then this run, the logic inside this run will be invoked. So in this case, it's basically reading this buffer reader object line by line, line by line, and then it will just reverse it. Okay, so this logic is relatively simple. Again, it read the buffer read object, and then reverse it, and then write into print writer object. Now, remember that printer writer object that we actually dealing with, meaning printer writer object that we are writing the output of this reversed string, is chained with piped out, meaning piped writer, right? So whenever you are writing to this. Whenever you write something to this print writer, it will be sent to piped the out uh, this piped uh, uh, piped writer object. Now, because piped writer object is in fact connected to piped in, as soon as you write something into pipe writer, it will be also fed into five pipe reader. Okay. So that is actually what's happening, and uh, then we we actually return reader object, and that could be fed into as a reader object of this sort. And same thing with this reverse. So that's how things work. So for example, if I want to change, um, you know, rather than So rather than uh, reverse and sort and reverse, you know, I might just do just maybe sort. So I'm going to just remove this guy and like this. Oops. Okay. Uh, looks like I have. Okay, so let's see. I'm not sure what change I made. Undo Control G. Right, let's start it again. Okay, so this is good. So I'm gonna just copy this guy. Okay, so I want to just do reverse and sort. So I remove this, and I need to remove. One ah. like this. Okay. So if I run this code, uh, 
uh, this is just reverse and then sorted okay so you can see things are reversed form of the words and then it is sorted okay so we are basically feeding into you know the uh, so when we call reverse it actually return uh, another read object and that is fed into sort method and uh, then sort method do the same thing using this piped uh, writer and pipe reader okay so if I actually um, I actually added some picture so this is a revert method so reverse method is receiving the data okay which is a buffered reader object type and then it's actually writing to print writer as I said before print writer is chain with a pipe dot meaning as soon as you're writing something to print writer that will be fed into pipe output now piped out is whatever you things whatever things that are fed into pipe out will be also fed into piped in because we connected those two together okay so hopefully that actually give you a sense of how this particular application work okay so let's move on yeah so this is file and directory handling so this is relatively straightforward so I'm going to just move ahead Uh, filter stream so this is you know again creating custom stream class that extends the uh, filter stream so checked input and checked output so this is the uh, filter stream that extends filter stream and uh, it's just overriding read method So this is basically custom logic that you know uh, the uh, we actually providing. So you know basically we want to perform some custom the uh, data manipulation. In that case, you can create the custom filter class. So that is an example of this. Okay, scanner and formatter. So you can have a scanner uh, object from this buffer reader and five reader object, and then you can um, so. Yeah, so scanner class provides a simple text scanner that can parse primitive types and strings using regular expression. Okay, so this is a convenient class. Uh, formatter class is same thing. Uh, okay, so I have about a few minutes, so let me just.